secondary. They send two. And they're complete to Boyd for a touchdown. Agile. Incredibly fast. With a competitive spirit that's second to none. All characteristics of a unique breed. A breed that is at its best when it travels in a pack. A wolf pack. Celebrating 100 years of NC State football. They put forth the ultimate effort. They stared adversity in the eye and never flinched. They set their sights high and met the challenge week in and week out. This was the 1991 Wolfpack, a team of coaches and players who achieved more than anyone expected and expected more of themselves than anyone could imagine. NC State football celebrated its 100th anniversary this season. The university honored the legacy of the coaches and players who built this program and brought it respect, tradition, and success. Perhaps it was with an eye on history that this 1991 Wolfpack team raised its expectations and made an even deeper commitment to excellence. The commitment was obvious from the day they reported. Uh, their uh, never give up attitude has been shown time after time and, and their, their overall uh, uh, feelings uh, and bonds with each other have been evident. So all of those qualities I think have been very important to what uh, this team has been able to accomplish. There were many questions to be answered when the Wolfpack kicked off the year against Virginia Tech. Concerns centered around a rebuilt defense and a secondary with only one starter returning. It didn't take long to get some answers. The rookie defensive backs played like old pros. Five interceptions, five sacks, and zero points told the whole story. Virginia Tech had our backs against the wall about five times, and uh, you know that that togetherness that we have on defense to come out and, uh, and play ball and, and not letting them in the end zone was, uh, was a big factor. This defense did not allow a single touchdown for three straight games. It displayed a kind of seek out and destroy mentality, thriving on opponents' fear and indecision. We thrive on the big play. Uh, we have guys that, that are, are great on defense. We have some hard hitters. We, we thrive on the interceptions, the fumbles, the sacks. And uh, we, we just want to be known as a hard hitting defense. Uh, I think it, towards the beginning of the year, we were leading the nation in forced turnovers. And uh, that was a goal of ours from the beginning. 
And we just want to be the kind of defense that, uh, that, that people know who we are. We want to have uh, respect in the comps as well as in the country. The defense had defined the Wolfpack style. The offense created its character. It amassed 84 points in three straight wins over Virginia Tech, Kent State, and Wake Forest. The leadership of quarterback Terry Jordan. The elusiveness of running back Anthony Barber. And the explosiveness of receiver Charles Davenport gave the NC State attack balanced and effective firepower. At Wake Forest, in the first ACC test of the year, the run and pass complemented each other perfectly. Balance is always something we strive for on offense. Some games, uh, the, the running game has been the the, uh, the most dominant factor offensively for us. In other games, the, the passing game has been critical. We have a lot of talent in the backfield and, and in the wide receiver position. Um, having that many players, you know, to be that well skilled, you know, in their position, it helps out a lot and makes our position at the quarterback uh, a lot easier. Against the Demon Deacons, Terry Jordan orchestrated the offense like a gifted maestro. The Wolfpack dominated in total offense and time of possession. The results of this virtuoso performance were reflected on the scoreboard, where the final total read, NC State 30, Wake Forest 3. At 3-0, the Wolfpack stood ready to tackle the heart of the conference schedule. As North Carolina invaded Carter-Findlay Stadium September 28th, NC State fans anticipated a fourth consecutive victory over their arch rivals. But in the second quarter, their high hopes headed for the hospital. Terry Jordan had suffered a broken arm. Freshman redshirt Jeff Bender was suddenly thrust into the spotlight. When Terry went down, who's been a starter and getting most of the reps in practice, you know, it was, it was kind of a little panic to go out because, you know, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Bender's kind of had been untested at that time. But um, I had confidence in him. I knew that, um, that Jeff was a gamer. He sent two. On just his third snap, Jeff Bender hit pay dirt. The Wolf Pack attack never skipped a beat. Well, they were in a blitz, and we've been working on it the whole week just to call the certain pass, and Eddie ran a beautiful route, and the line in the backs, they picked up everyone else blitzing, and it was just easy taking. Jeff is uh, definitely, he's very confident, and. Uh, very cool about anything, doesn't have, have a worry in the world, which, uh, I mean, that just makes everything so much uh, easier for everyone else. Bender executed the game plan flawlessly. His third quarter strike to Charles Davenport put the pack in front 17 to seven, making things much easier for the NC State defense. Sebastian Savage benefited with two interceptions. His second sealed the Tar Heels' fate. Burnett with drop pass 
is intercepted. Sebastian Savage out of the hands of Joey Yacht. And it's a foot race to the end zone. What an appropriate finish to this game. Sebastian Savage. Quarterback threw the ball and he tipped it up in the air and I was just back at the one yard line waiting on it. And when I caught the ball, you know, all I saw was grass and that's I was just, that's all I wanted, and I wasn't going to let anybody catch me, so I just took off. You know, it was like a dream come true. Despite losing their starting quarterback, the Wolf Pack prevailed 24-7. The victory was especially sweet for NC State seniors. In four years, they had never lost to the Tar Heels. I've never lost to North Carolina, and from where I'm from, I'm from North Carolina, I can, till I'm 67 years old, I can sit there and say, uh, don't talk to me. I've never lost to Carolina. I've, I mean, that's one thing I can say, and I've been to four straight bowl games, so I, I'm by no means, I cannot complain about anything. <laughs> the celebration was short, as defending national champion Georgia Tech was waiting in the wings. The Georgia Tech game was real important because, uh, you know, they were ranked higher than us, and uh, they were supposed to be the team in the ACC and, uh, you know, it's just another fact that we can prove that we can play with uh, top contending teams in the country. This would be a clash of two heavyweights. NC State was undefeated and Georgia Tech was defending the 1990 ACC championship. The Wolfpack went for the knockout early. The Yellow Jackets were on the ropes. NC State's defense threw everything it had at the Ramblin' Wreck. The throw, screen pass complete. It's to Smith. Smith cuts up field and loses the football. NC State has it. Ricky Turner returning it for a touchdown. But this game was far from over. The Yellow Jackets were stunned, but not beaten. They countered with two third-quarter scores to take a one-point lead. It was now apparent the outcome would be decided by the size of the heart rather than the size of the man. We knew we couldn't give up. We knew that we had the talent to beat them. Uh, some things weren't going right for us that day at that point in time, and we just knew we had to come together as a group and get the job done. We were really fired up and... Uh... We knew we could score once we got a couple plays going, and once we reached the 50, we knew there was no stopping us. The Wolf Pack was not to be denied. defense to make the big plays in the fourth quarter and offense to take the ball the length of the field on the winning drive and for the kicking game to, to hold up under pressure at the end of that ball game. All as aspects of our football team contributed in the fourth quarter uh, of the Georgia Tech game and, and uh, that I think game provided a, a measuring point and a level of confidence that uh, carried over to the remainder of the season. With a 28-20 victory the Wolf Pack was 5-0 and, oh, and headed for the nation's top 10. The Wolf Pack could do no wrong, or so it seemed. Against Marshall, the dream season nearly turned into a nightmare. With three minutes left in the ball game, NC State trailed by 11. 
Their backs were against the wall. But the offense remained undaunted. It drove 64 yards in 17 plays to stuff the ball in the end zone. Only a minute remained. All they needed was a miracle. What they got was a perfect onside kick. It's really four guys going after the ball, you know, hoping to get a high kick and, you know, everybody just go up after the ball. And just luckily, I was the one that, you know, went up higher than everybody else and got control of the ball. Still needing a touchdown, with precious seconds ticking away, everyone in the stadium knew what was coming, but no one could stop it. It was a great feeling for me. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't anticipate it happening. It just opened up, and uh, uh, you know, I guess I was fortunate. I was lucky. Call it what you want. Uh, it was, it was a game that I, I didn't care too much to be in. I mean, I like close games, but I don't like them to be that close. So I'm just happy things turned out the way it did. It's something I always reflect back on. You know, part of this team, the attitude and the, uh, I guess you could say, the characteristics of not quitting, not giving up. You know, if there's time on the clock, there's hope. We probably can get it done. The miraculous one-point victory extended the Wolfpack's unbeaten streak to six games. More importantly, it revealed the courage and character that made this team one of the greatest in the 100 years of NC State football. Although they would eventually lose two games in 1991, this team's confidence and trust in themselves never faltered in the face of adversity. We look at adversity as a challenge, and you either rise to the challenge or you don't. And for the most part this year, we have, we've overcome the adversity, and, and it's benefited. After a loss at Clemson, NC State responded with an all-out offensive assault on South Carolina. Tailback Anthony Barber rushed for 133 yards to win the game's most valuable player award as the Wolfpack outlasted the Gamecocks 38 to 21. The pack's ultimate challenge was yet to come. Quarterback Jeff Bender went down in the Virginia game, bringing on true freshman Terry Harvey. The war of attrition was taking its toll. With bowl bids on the line, a third string, untested quarterback had the team's fate in his hands. At Duke, he faced an 18-point deficit, but never lost his composure. No, I mean, I didn't think we were out of it because we had some good athletes out there and some big play players. But the way it was going, we wasn't scoring many points. So I was, I was, I was wondering, but I, you know, I'm in a position where I can't wonder. I've got to keep going out there and keep getting after it. Just when it appeared the Wolfpack was completely out of gas, it came up with another big play. Could lightning strike twice in the same season? With two minutes to play, NC State pulled within seven. Here's the snap, it's a good one. Kilpatrick puts it down, the kick is on its way, and it's good! In an instant replay of the Marshall Miracle, Damon Hartman and Sebastian Savage pulled off another perfect onside kick. I think the ball was up in there about 10, 10 feet at least, you know, because it that was the most perfect bounce you can get, and in a way, when I jumped, but like everyone else, just still looking up in the air at it. And I was just like, you know, I got the ball and came down. I was just happy, you know. I knew I had that one, too. Harvey will drop to his 40 to throw again. Heavy rush. He scrambles, rolling to his right, looking, 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 throwing it long down the sideline, and it is caught by going to the five-yard line. 
I knew we needed we needed a big play, and um, the ball, you know, the, the moment was there for me to make that big play. And the ball was thrown; it was just a little bit out in front of me, and uh, I just stretched my body as far as it can go, and I uh, got my hand out there, and I got a hand on the ball, and you know, I, I felt determined that I had to bring that ball in, and uh, luckily I did. Terry Harvey took it in himself to pull within one. There was no indecision. The pack would go for two and the win. Robert Hinton put NC State in front for the first time all day. But with 14 seconds left, it wasn't over yet. Very important NC State kickoff with 14 seconds left. He hits it high. It's a sky ball. And it's coming down to Brad Breedlove at the 18-yard line. He takes it running laterally and now cuts up the right sideline to the 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. He's free at the 50. One man to beat at the 30-yard line of NC State, the 20. And Fobble, the kicker, knocks him out of bounds at the 15-yard line as the clock goes to zero. And that is the football game. I feel like that there's, there's not a team in the nation that going into the fourth quarter that uh, if the game is close, you know, if we were within striking range, we can't come back on and win. You know, that's just been evident all season. And I think that you know, Coach Sheridan said it best when he said that, you know, you get what you deserve, you know, in life. And it applies to football as well. On November 23rd, the seniors played their final game in Carter Finley Stadium. It was a day to reflect, a moment to savor. They had played on four bowl teams and provided the inspiration for one of the most memorable seasons in Wolfpack history. Our seniors this year were not so much outspoken. We, we led by leadership. Uh, the things that we did out on the football field and the practice on the practice fields, uh, we, we really didn't have too much, you know, pep, rah rah speeches to say. But uh, once we uh, were out on the field between the hedges, we just, you know, let it all hang out. And, you know, the guys who were under us and the underclassmen saw how well we were doing out there. And they just tried to come, you know, come into play and uh, do their roles too. Although the outcome was in doubt until the fourth quarter on the scoreboard, it was never in doubt in their hearts. NC State was on its way to the Peach Bowl New Year's Day. Although they surprised the experts, they simply accomplished what they set out to do so many months ago. It would be very difficult to say this is a surprise because this is what we've been working for since the end of the previous season, to, to have a team that uh, could be nationally ranked and in a, in a bowl game and, and uh, to try and be a special team in NC State's history. And this team has earned the, the opportunity to, to be that type of team. It was indeed a special team in a special year. At 9-2, it matched the highest victory total in the 100-year history of NC State football. For commitment, effort, and courage, it had set the standard for the second century ahead.